Hey guys, Do Legit City here. Today we're going to be going over some of the oxygen non included basics. Today we're going to be going over solar panels. And that means in today's video, we're going to be going over the solar panel building. And of course, that means the lux, otherwise known as the light values. If you guys didn't know, the solar panel is one of many power sources, as this is going to convert the lux value or the light in the light overlay into power. And as solar panels do in real life, they take that light energy and convert it into usable tower that we could use for whatever we want. Now, some of the things about the solar panel is that initially you do need glass for this and it creates 380 watts of power. The one thing about this is that this is variable. It's going to generate power depending on how much light it actually receives, if you guys didn't know that. The building in and of itself does not generate any heat, and because of how it's typically placed in space like so, there's not usually going to be a lot of gases or solids nearby, meaning that if we have something that does create heat that's sitting on top of or touching the base of the solar panel, you might be adding some heat to the building that it will not be able to dissipate and will thus eventually break the solar panel. So be wary with that. Make sure to not drop anything that's too hot on the base of the solar panel and to make sure to not drop or release any gas nearby. So wait, make sure your rocket platforms aren't on top of this as it's going to block light a little bit as the center of the platform reduces the light by a little versus the side as you can see right there not only that the exhaust of each of the engines lifting off can break the solar panels another thing about the solar panels is that the base of the solar panel is walkable meaning that it's a floor that your duplicates will be able to travel on top of now of course the solar panel is seven tiles wide and three tiles tall this building actually needs to receive a total value of 350,000 lux value. So right now, it's going to be individually spread over the seven tiles because that's going to be the side of the solar panel. So over the seven tiles, we have to have cumulatively 350,000 lux value. So that means that we cannot hit maximum power until we get that much light. Now, of course, the mass dictates that. That means we need to have over the seven tiles 50,000 lux per tile. The old design of having a pyramid of solar panels is no longer going to be viable as each of the different asteroids are going to have varying lux value. So clicking on the star map by pressing the Z button, or if you guys rebinded that key, whatever the star map button is for you, you guys could click on the asteroids that you guys have discovered, and there's something called peak light. Peak light is going to actually refer to how much light you actually get on each of the asteroids, and they're going to vary from asteroid to asteroid. Now, that being said, depending on what your peak light value is, you may or may not be able to hit the maximum value. As I said before, over the seven tiles, each tile has to have 50,000 lux. And on the starter planet for us on our playthrough, we only have 40,000. That means that I will actually never hit the maximum amount of power. And because of that, I have to accommodate for that accordingly. If I overconsume because I had the rough estimate that I assumed that it was 380 watts instead of the actual value that we got because of the lux value difference, I need to change up my rough calculation so that if it runs out of power, I'm actually going to have to accommodate for that. Of course, that being said, there's another thing about light that's going to be a little bit different. Light is not always present. We actually go through a day-night cycle in each one of the asteroids. During the nighttime, as you can see, it's pitch black, and thus our solar panels are generating no power at all. That's because we have three hours a night. And because of that, you guys have to make what's called a battery bank where you have your solar panels connected to some jumbo batteries. It's usually going to be a one-to-one -one ratio, a one solar panel to one jumbo battery buffer so that each solar panel's power generated is buffered into the jumbo battery because 75 seconds, which is three hours of the nighttime times the maximum value of 380 watts, it's around 28,500 joules, which means that one jumbo battery is easily going to be able to buffer the amount of power it would have generated if it was light all day every day. But of course, we do not have that case. So 
make sure to buffer your solar panels so that you have power through the night. Another thing about light is that it does not immediately shine at full power. As you can see at the start of the day right now, it's rapidly climbing up. And because of that, our solar panels wattage is very, very low. This also has to climb up. And because of that, the amount of wattage you get from your solar panels is actually less than what the peak is, of course, because of how the power powers up then at the middle of the day high noon it starts to power down again so from the zero value to the peak light value and then at the second half of the day it's going to be dropping from the peak light value down to zero because of that you guys are actually going to always generate less power than what's actually advertised due to the climbing of the power in the day drop during the evening and then no power at night so be weary of that. Understand that you're not always going to be getting the maximum wattage. And in most cases, you have to have peak light lux value per tile to be an absurd number for you to get the 380 watts constantly. Of course, if you do block off a tile of the solar panel with the tile so that it impedes the light, you could make up the wattage by having more lux value on the remaining six tiles. So if you guys do want to utilize that pyramid design because you have that much lux, you're fine to do so. Just understand that you need to provide more light per tile because of that. But otherwise, guys, that has been the solar panel basics in the game of Oxygen Not Included. Just going over how lux value works for the light. You guys might also know that shine bugs these little guys right here also produce light however you could see that they produce nowhere as close to the light value you need in order for the solar panel to get power not only that the farther you go away from the shine bugs the less lux you actually generate meaning that not only will you need a high amount of shine bugs on top of the solar panel you cannot allow them to fly away either as the further they fly away the less light we generate however i highly advise building a shine bug solar panel factory as that can generate a lot of lag for your game it is not worth the power and i believe each shine bug if placed in the ideal position only generates around 8 to 10 watts of power and because of that, for you to hit the 380 constantly, you're going to need an absurd number of shine bugs on these specific tiles. And of course, guys, if you guys have any questions about this, leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And of course, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys.